Today we're taking a moment to remember those we've lost. People who touched our lives in ways we'll always cherish. But today, we have list of iconic stars who have left us. Legends somehow contributed their work ended up passing away. Let's come together to honor their memory. So in their honor, we're asking you to join us to like and subscribe this channel as a tribute to those we've lost. Let's keep their spirit alive by spreading kindness and joy. Joe Engel, born on August 26, 1932 in United States. He was an American pilot, engineer, and NASA astronaut. He commanded two space shuttle missions, including the second one in 1981. He also participated in two shuttle test flights in 1977. Engel was one of 12 pilots who flew the X-15, an experimental space plane used by the Air Force and NASA. As an X-15 pilot, Engel flew above 50 miles three times, qualifying him for astronaut wings. In 1966, he was chosen for NASA's fifth astronaut group and joined the Apollo program. He was a backup pilot for Apollo 14 and was supposed to walk on the moon with Apollo 17. But when some flights were canceled, NASA chose geologist Harrison Schmidt instead, so Engel didn't go. Engel joined the U.S. Air Force through the ROTC program at the University of Kansas. In school, he was part of the Theta Tau engineering fraternity and decided to become a test pilot. During a summer job at Cessna Aircraft, he learned to fly from a colleague, Henry Dittmer. He started flying school in 1957 and got his pilot wings in 1958. He flew the F-100 Super Sabre with two squadrons in California. Chuck Yeager recommended him for the USAF Test Pilot School, which he finished in 1961. He then joined the Aerospace Research Pilot School, although he preferred flying planes to flying in space capsules. Engel died at the age of 91, and he died naturally. Tribute to the Star Kirsten Dalholm, born on 5th April 1945 in Denmark. She was a Danish artist and theater director. She created over 30 shows that mixed scenography with performance art, using many different techniques, media, and materials. In the 1970s, Dalholm worked as a scenographer for the Rim Fax Theater Group. In 1977, she and Per Flinkbass started Billed Stoff Theatret, a theater collective that ran until 1985. She developed new ideas for performance art, making scenes where people formed artistic tableau with music or sound effects. Her works included Golden Wings and Blue Promises and Intrusive Relatives, a live exhibit at Nie Carlsberg Glyptotech in 1979. In 1985, Dale Holm founded the Hotel Pro Forma Theater Group, which she led until she died. She created about 30 performances combining art and theater, using landscape painting and modern minimalistic design. Some of her works used mirrored images and optical illusions. Her Terra Australia Incognita, inspired by voyages of discovery, gave viewers a bird's eye view of actors below. Daleholm worked with architects, writers, and composers, earning a reputation for renewing theatrical sonography. She won the Thorvaldsen Medal in 2013 for her innovative art and strong scenic confrontations. In 2015, she received the Artist Award for the Performing Arts and the Danish Honorary Remert Award of the Year. Delholm died at the age of 79, and she died from short illness. Tribute to the Star Bill Viola, born on January 25, 1951, in United States. He was an American video artist who used electronic, sound and image technology in new media. His works explored basic human experiences like birth, death, and consciousness. From 1973 to 1980, Viola studied and performed with composer David Tudor in a music group called Rainforest, later renamed Composers Inside Electronics. From 1974 to 1976, he worked as technical director at Art Tapes 22, a video studio in Florence, Italy. 
where he met video artists Nam June Paik, Bruce Nauman, and Vito Aconsi. From 1976 to 1983, he was artist in residence at 13 Television Laboratory in New York. In 1976 and 1977, he traveled to the Solomon Islands, Java, and Indonesia to record traditional performing arts. In 1977, Viola was invited to show his work at La Trobe University in Melbourne, Australia, by cultural arts director Kira Peroff. He and Peroff later married and began working and traveling together. In 1980, they spent a year and a half in Japan on a cultural exchange fellowship, studying Buddhism with Zen master Dayan Tanaka. During this time, Viola was also an artist-in-residence at Sony Corporation's Atsugi Laboratories. Viola died at the age of 73, and he died from Alzheimer's disease. Tribute to the Star Tonka Dracht, born on 12 November 1930 in Netherlands, she was a Dutch writer and illustrator of children's books. Her book, The Letter for the King, was named the best Dutch youth book of the second half of the 20th century by CPNB. Many of Tonka Dracht's books are set in fantasy or science fiction worlds, but are often linked to the real world. The Letter for the King, Secrets of the Wild Wood, and some short stories are set in a fictional medieval world. High as a tower, wide as a mile, eyes of tigers, and related stories are near-future science fiction set on Venus and Earth. The Towers of February alternates between our world and a parallel world. The Sevenfold Way is set in a realistic setting. Tonky Drax's style and themes were unique in Dutch children's literature, which mostly featured realistic day-to-day -day settings involving young children before the 1960s. In the 1960s, Dracht and Thea Beckman pioneered children's literature with thick books, featuring protagonists in historical fantasy and science fiction settings. Dracht's first books and illustrations were inspired by her childhood in Batavia and by the Middle Ages. She included exotic settings in her stories like rainforests and mountains in Secrets of the Wildwood and The Letter for the King. In Stories of the Twin Brothers, the main setting, Beno, resembles Batavia, while the characters wear Italian Renaissance fashion. The main characters, Giacomo and Lorenzo, wear a giornea and a cap. Drag died at the age of 93, and she died naturally. Tribute to the Star Richard Simmons, born on July 12, 1948, in the United States. He was an American fitness personality and public figure, best known for his weight loss programs and his Sweatin' to the Oldies aerobics videos. Simmons started his weight loss career by opening a gym called Slimmons in Beverly Hills, California, which catered to overweight people. He became famous through TV appearances and the popularity of his fitness products. He was often parodied and appeared frequently on late-night talk shows like The Late Show with David Letterman and The Howard Stern Show. Throughout his long career, he promoted health and exercise and later became involved in political activism. In 2008, he supported a bill requiring non-competitive physical education in public schools as part of the No Child Left Behind Act. After moving to Los Angeles in the 1970s, Simmons worked as the maitre d'hôtel at Derrick's, a restaurant in Beverly Hills, where he became interested in fitness. At that time, gyms catered to people who were already fit, offering little help to those who needed to get fit. He lost 123 pounds and opened his own exercise studio, originally called the Anatomy Asylum. The studio focused on healthy eating, proper portions, and enjoyable exercise in a supportive environment. It also had a salad bar restaurant called Ruffage, a pun on Ruffage, dietary fiber. But later the studio focused only on exercise and was renamed Slimmons. Simmons taught motivational classes and aerobics at Slimmons, which remained open until November 2016. 
Simmons died at the age of 76, and he died from long illness. Tribute to the Star Sheldon Harnick, fiddler on the roof lyricist, died June 23rd at the age of 99. The Chicago-born Harnick moved to New York in 1950 and teamed with composer Jerry Brock, with whom he wrote 1959's Fiorello, 1960's Tenderloin, 1963's She Loves Me, 1966's The Apple Tree, and 1970's The Rothschilds. But the two collaborators will be best remembered for 1964's Fiddler on the Roof, a tale of Jewish life in a Russian village, which premiered on Broadway in 1964 and was turned into the 1971 film of the same name with Kyaim Topol playing the role of the Milkman Tevye. Tribute to the Star Bita St. John, the actress known for playing Lita in the original Broadway production of South Pacific, and for starring alongside Cary Grant in Dream Wife, died June 23rd at 93. Born Betty Jean Striegler in Hawthorne Caliph, she also appeared in a few Tarzan films, first Tarzan and the Lost Safari, and later returning for Tarzan, The Magnificent. Her other film credits included Corridors of Blood, The City of the Dead, High Tide at Noon, and The Naked Dawn. On the TV side, St. John appeared on International Detective, The Four Just Men, Armchair Theater, and The Invisible Man, among others. Tribute to the Star Frederick Forrest, a veteran character actor who was known for playing an excitable chef in Apocalypse Now, and also received an Oscar nomination for his work in the 1979 musical drama The Rose, died June 24 at 86. Born in Waxahachie, Texas, Forrest moved to New York to study acting and found success in the theater before moving to Los Angeles to pursue a film career. His big screen credits included The Conversation, Tucker, The Man and His Dream, Valley Girl, The Two Jakes, Falling Down, Chasers, Lassie and Point Blank, while his TV credits included Lonesome Dove, Quo Vadas, and 21 Jump Street. Tribute to the Star Nicholas Coster, the soap opera star best known for playing Lionel Lockridge on NBC's Santa Barbara, died June 26th after complications of myelitis plastic syndromes following a long battle with cancer. He was 89. Coster made his big screen debut in the 1950s with an uncredited role in Titanic. The prolific character actor had a career that spanned several decades, including roles in All the President's Men, Star Trek, The Next Generation, Charlie's Angels, and All My Children. Costa received three Daytime Emmy nominations during his tenure on Santa Barbara, and later won in 2017 for his turn as Mayor Jack Madison on Prime Video's The Bay. In recent years, he appeared on The Young Pope, The Last Exorcist, and The Deep Ones, which he also co-produced. In 2021, Costa published a memoir, Another Whole Afternoon. Tribute to the Star The remains of 65-year-old English actor Julian Sands were identified June 27th, more than five months after he was reported missing following a hike in the Southern California mountain. Sands first earned attention as an actor opposite Anthony Hopkins in the 1983 miniseries A Married Man. NBC's adaptation of The Sun Also Rises and The Killing Fields, before rising to prominence as the romantic lead of the 1985 drama a Room with a View. He went on to appear in such films and TV series as Leaving Las Vegas, Arachnophobia, Boxing Helena, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Ocean's 13, Smallville, Dexter, and 24. 
tribute to the star. Sue Johansson, the beloved Canadian sex educator who shared unabashedly honest sex advice on programs like Sunday Night Sex Show and Talk Sex with Sue Johansson, died at 93. Johansson rose to popularity when she began hosting her radio program, Sunday Night Sex Show, which saw her answer all manner of sex-related questions live on air. The program went on to become a successful television series and received its own U.S. spin-off, Talk Sex with Sue Johansson, in 2002. Johansson was also the author of three books and starred on several episodes of the television series Degrassi Junior High and Degrassi, The Next Generation. Tribute to the Star Few actors have been as committed to transforming their bodies as Brendan Fraser. Over his career, the 54-year-old has gone from extremely fit to less so, taking a serious toll on his physical and mental health. To prepare for his role in George of the Jungle, he starved himself, sometimes going days without eating. Fraser became famous for films like Encino Man and George of the Jungle establishing himself as a 90s comedy star before leading the blockbuster franchise The Mummy. He then disappeared from Hollywood for a while, but now he's back with an Oscar-worthy performance in The Whale. In George of the Jungle, Fraser's body was the opposite of his role in The Whale. To achieve that toned look, he went to extreme measures, recently revealing to Adam Sandler in Vanity Fair that he starved himself. I was waxed and starved of carbohydrates, Fraser said. The wardrobe was minimal. George wears a loincloth. Despite his rigorous training and strict diet, he often skipped meals, which affected his ability to function. I needed cash one day and couldn't remember my pin because my brain was misfiring, he recalled. I didn't eat that night. Despite his rapid rise to fame, Fraser quickly faded into obscurity due to a combination of factors including a heavy workload. He told Newsweek, I felt like the horse from Animal Farm, whose job was to work endlessly. I've had to rebuild things that got knocked down and do it again for the good of everyone. Now Fraser is back in a big way, playing a 270 kilo teacher in The Whale, a role that required elaborate prosthetics to depict someone eating himself to death. Playing both a physically fit character and one over a quarter ton has been challenging for him. Thank you for joining us on episode of Fame Story TV, where we remember and pay tribute to the lives and stories of remarkable people who have left us today. If this video touched your heart, please consider honoring their memory by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. See you in the next episode.